Hello, my name is Lynn and I have been part of the R&D team at Bygnosis since 2015. During this time, one of the things I worked on extensively is the search engine Pulsar. Today, I am going to show you how to interpret and use the peptide data match or PDM plot in Spectronaut. Those of you who come from the DDA world might be more familiar with the peptide spectrum match or PSM plot. We have a PSM plot in Spectromine, our software for qualitative and quantitative analysis of DDA data, as well as isobaric labeling quantification. The PSM plot displays the identified theoretical fragments over the measured MS2 spectrum. The PDM plot is the DIA equivalent of the PSM plot, yet it shows how the library fragments map to the DIA data. Both plots in our software look very similar, so today we will focus on the PDM plot in Spectronaut. First, let's look at this plot. The plot can be found in the analysis perspective of Spectronaut at the level of the precursor. There are three frames. In the upper left frame of the PDM plot, you can set some preferences to be displayed in your plots. The bottom left frame shows MS1 information and the frame on the right shows MS2 information. The MS1 panel on the lower left contains the MS1 scan with the selected MS1 feature. The scan that is shown is the scan at apex. By default, the scan is zoomed in at the feature, but the whole scan can be visualized by right-clicking on the plot and selecting Set Scale to show all. It's easy to go back to the feature by clicking Set Scale to default. If you need help understanding what all the lines mean, you can simply click on Show Legend. The spectrum panel on the right shows the Apex MS2 scan with fragments as selected by the settings. The sequence coverage panel in the top right frame indicates how much evidence there is for a certain amino acid position based on the fragments, in two directions, both N-terminal as well as C-terminal. The lower right panel is the mass error panel and shows the mass error between the theoretical and measured MZ of a fragment. The fragments in the spectrum, as well as the mass error data points and the sequence coverage panel, have two colors, blue for N-terminal ions and red for C-terminal ions. Here too, I click on Show Legend. Now let's focus on the settings panel and see how to tune the visualization to your preference. The option Show Tolerance window allows you to visualize the mass tolerance used for a particular fragment. This applies to both the MS1 and the MS2 scans. The option Show Calibrated MZ indicates the fragment MZ after calibration. We usually calibrate the theoretical values to get closer to the measured values. As you can see, this also applies to both MS1 and MS2 scans. With peak label, you can choose the label that is displayed on the peaks of the MS1 and the MS2 scans. By default, it is the ion name. However, you can also change it to the MZ value. You can also decide whether you want to display the mass error in Thomson or PPM the bottom right mass error panel. Then the fragments filters let you specify which fragments to show on the scan. The default is extended library fragments, which means that all fragments in the library are displayed, independent of whether they were excluded from the asset or not. By selecting library fragments, only the fragments that were part of the asset will be shown. Finally, you can also show all theoretical. This will generate all theoretical fragments from the current precursor and tries to map them to the spectrum. As you can see, the fragments that can be matched with a measured peak are displayed at the same intensity as that measured peak. You can also adjust the minimum and maximum fragment position and charge to be visualized, as well as the ion type where P stands for precursor and R for reporter ion in isobaric labeling experiments. And finally, there's the neutral losses. If you have a data set with modification-specific neutral losses, for example, a phospho data set like we have here, then those losses will be automatically added to the selection. I hope you found the explanation of the PDM plots helpful. 
You can follow future tutorials on our software tools by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.